Amen. First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. So this will be the final teaching in the series. While we wait, we offer our bodies. Verse 12. First Corinthians 6 from verse 12. Flee sexual immorality. Verse 12. 12. Okay. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. 13. Meats for the belly and belly for meats. Amen. Meats for the belly and belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And God had both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by the power, by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are what? Members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? Finish it. Come on, come on, come on. Pretend that you are reading now. Finish it. God forbid. Verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Next verse. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? One spirit. Know ye not that your bodies are members. Sorry, flee fornication. All right? Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are both gods. Amen. Give me verse 13 on the board. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats. The Lord shall destroy both it and them. Now, look, listen to me very carefully. We started last Sunday by making a clear distinction between what is flesh and what is body. Are you following me? And if you understand what is flesh, you then understand that flesh is spiritual. Are you following me? Flesh is spiritual. So you read 1 Corinthians 6 very carefully, you will find out that the Bible is actually trying to tell you that the body has to find a way to be married to the spiritual. Now, Satan's way of marrying you to the world, which is spiritual, the world is not the earth also. Are you following me? Aha. The world is not the earth. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world is not the earth. The earth is a physical substance. The world is a cosmic system that is spiritual that exerts upon this physical. So you find out that there's a consistent marriage between the physical and the spiritual. Now, your body is physical. That's this ganganjiki. This external one. It's physical. But you see, that body has to enter a marriage that is spiritual. Are you following me? Now, that marriage will either be a marriage to the flesh or a marriage to the spirit. Now, you know that. That means that in the realm of the spirit, the spirit is spiritual. The flesh is carnal. Uh, so, the flesh itself is not physical. That means, listen to this, that's why that scripture started by telling you all things are lawful. That means everything that is physical, I can, there's a lawful way to engage it. Are you following me? There's a lawful way to engage physical resources. There's a lawful way to engage physical desires. There's a lawful way. Now, but you see, the connection between that which is physical and that which is spiritual is desire. That means that desire is the transition point. That's why your soul is the transition point between that which is physical and that which is spiritual. You got me so far? Let me hear you say an amen. So your soul is a transition point. That means that what you desire and in what direction your desire goes tells us whether your body wants to marry flesh or your body wants to marry spirit, which are both spiritual. For instance, if you read the works of the flesh, in Galatians chapter 5, you find that witchcraft is listed as the work of the flesh. 
That means that these people that fly in the night are fleshy. Even though they are spiritual. That means that you can speak about the spiritual from two standpoints. Right? One standpoint of speaking about the spiritual is everything that is beyond the realm of the physical. Alright? But the other standpoint of speaking about what is spiritual is from the definition of the father of all spirits. So in the spirit, there are spirits that are not spirit. They are not considered spiritual because they are not submitted to the father of all spirits. Are you following me? The moment Satan led that rebellion, he created as it were in the realm of the spirit, the, a spiritual reality that is not submitted to God. So God's intent, if you understand the book of Colossians, what the book of Colossians stayed emphasizing is that God's intent is that in the end, all things will be submitted to Christ. So hell or the bottomless pit will not be in Satan's jurisdiction. It will be in the jurisdiction of Christ. So if you decide to go to hell, sorry, if you decide to go to the bottomless pit, Right? If you make the decision that that's where you want to now go and spend eternity. There will be no class captain with a fork choking you. Because he will also be under torment. Imagine what is tormenting your tormentor. No, you don't want to be tormented by what is tormenting your tormentor. So just in case you had made up your mind that you want to live the way you want to live so that you can end in hell. My candid advice this morning is that hell is under the government of God. It's not under the government of Satan. But hell is not a place you want to go to. Hell is not a place God will be inspecting. Because God's heart cannot take it. No. So God will not only cast to the bottomless pit. What, what he will do is he will take that entire system and cast it to the outer darkness. So that he does not remember that anything is captured. But everything that is in rebellion in the realm of the spirit has to be captured and locked in that place. That's our guarantee that forever Jesus alone will be Lord. Do you understand it so far? So just in case you have not understood Christian doctrine as to hell, as prison is to a nation, that's how hell is to God. Unfortunately, God's hell is not rehabilitation center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because let us drive them out so that they will not eat of the tree of life and live forever. Now, the problem is that the moment you transition into the next realm, the state you arrive in, nobody can change it. Even God will not. He cannot. The system he attached to your life does not make for repentance at death. Because by the time you cross the line called death, you arrive in a state where if you were rebellious here, you will sustain rebellion there. So everything that has the tendency of disorganizing heaven is what God is sending to hell. So why will anybody be a partner with Satan now? No, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So why should anybody partner with Satan now to agree to legalize Satan's chaos in the spirit. Because every action you take in the physical, I said to you, your flesh and your spirit, which are both spiritual, are the ones that are inspiring that action. The pathway to get the desire of the flesh or the desire of the spirit to find manifestation in your body and consummate that marriage between your body and your spirit is your desire. Do you understand? So Pastor A wrote a song a long time ago. I desire nothing else, no one else but you, Lord. Eh? He wrote another one not too long ago. I set my heart on you, my soul on you, my mind on you. You see those meditative songs? You have to learn it so that you can set your affection. Do you realize that the Bible told you that the reason for setting your affection is so that when Christ, who is your life, appears. Oh, I wish you heard me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I was speaking in a room full of Bible scholars. So that I don't have to explain that part. It's to waste time. If then you'll be reasonable, Colossians 3 1. Put it back. 
Colossians 3, 1 on the board for me. Where I'm going to is Philippians 3. So I don't want to, I don't want to postpone this teaching to Tuesday. All right? Come on, come on. All right? Are you still here? So understand that every action you take that is not inspired by God is also coming from the realm of the spirit. It's coming from a marriage. It's a marriage with the flesh. So the day I gave my life to Christ, part of the vow of giving my life to Christ is that my body will not be joined with anything that Christ has not ordained. If you then be risen with Christ, what, what should you do? Come on, seek those things which are above. Where Christ? You are the one reading it. I can, I'm quoting it. You, you are the one reading it. So you should be doing better than me. Alright? If you then be risen with Christ, uh -huh, seek those things. Uh -huh. Where Christ is seated? Where? At the right hand of the Father. How do you do it? By set your affection on things above. Uh -huh. Not on earthly things. Right? Why? For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ. Where? In God. Read verse 4 and read it like you're excited. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also. So the only way we can be guaranteed to appear with him in glory is that while we were here, we were seeking the things that are there. Do you understand me? That's why Galatians 5 now said to you, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. It's not body. See, I want to say to you today that your body sustains the right to desire. Just like your body sustains the right to hunger. You understand it? Your, your body sustains the right to desire. But what you focus your mind on will take advantage of that desire and either stretch it to the flesh or stretch it to the spirit. So you can finish eating food and God is glorified. You can finish eating food and Satan is glorified. Do you understand me? So that you have to understand that the definition of sin is not in the action. The definition of sin is in the intent. It's in the desire. Are you following me? Listen, it will also play down Satan's control over your mind. And it will play it down significantly. When you now realize that there's no person that Satan will want to use to make you sin, that is not legal. It's just the context of its fulfillment that is divine. Listen, so let me say it the way it will trouble you so that you can think about that one. Then I can go on and preach what I came to preach. Listen, it is that legality of righteousness. Listen, I'm talking about lawful righteousness. I'm talking about fleshly righteousness. It's that legality of righteousness that now makes a person believe that she is hunger. Any amount of food you give me, if I finish it, I'm still righteous. Because there's no law written that I am in sin when I eat too much food. Do you understand that that's the same reason why we want Jesus not to come back until we marry? <laughs> because we believe that the moment we enter into marriage, that desire, that one you are thinking about, that desire becomes legal. And for many even believers, they don't even believe there's still a legality in that legality. Because there's a way you can legally use what is legal that will become illegal. Because at that point, what governs us is where our heart is set. Oh, the back on the brass, yeah. Does it make sense to you? So that I have it does not mean I can use it when I want it. That's why the Bible recommends fasting. And I thank God that it's not only food, they ask you to fast. Even that one you are thinking about, God asks you to fast it. The only thing Paul begs you is that if you are married to somebody who wants, don't come and say you are fasting and though both of you do not agree and now cause trouble. I wish I was talking to couples. Let's move on to other things. Next. May the Holy Ghost complete that last one I was saying. Now, understand that this works 
for every kind of desire. But also notice, I tried to call your attention in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 13 the last time, that the meats are plural, but the belly is singular. That means every kind of meat, man of God, every kind of meat is going to the same belly. What is the belly? It's flesh. Mm. The meat is physical. The belly is either flesh or spirit. <laughs> I said I'm going to close in Philippians chapter 3. What you find in Philippians chapter 3 is whose God is their belly. I'm going there. But it will not be complete if it's only Philippians chapter 3 we speak about. We also have to talk about John chapter 7. That out of their belly shall flow rivers of living waters. That means that there's one belly that seeks to take in. There's another belly that seeks to flow out. And the belly that seeks to flow out satisfies the physical belly only to the degree to which it is necessary. So what to the lamb whose king is a child. That means that the man who understands the operation called belly will not sit down to eat for pleasure. You can't wake up early in the morning. You understand it? That's why we are suffering in Africa. Many of our kings are children. All they are thinking about is pleasure. All that drives them is pleasure and fear. But blessed is the land. Whose king is the son of the nobles? Who eats for strength? And not for drunkenness. That means within the context of being spiritual, the physical belly, I'm talking about this physical belly, the physical one, not the physical belly will only receive as much as is necessary to operate. And that was what I now was referring to as we offer our bodies. Because I said to you that you then have to take care of this physical body as a matter of worship. So I will not start any practice that will damage this body. That's why I cannot smoke it, though. Even cigar, I can't, sm I can't smoke it. Because whatever, how can they write on top of something that this thing is killing you slowly? Then you use your money to buy it. Then you consume it. Let's not reach the alcohol part. Oh. Let's not touch that one. Because there's still a mighty argument in churches. What we find in scripture is that you should take a little alcohol for the sake of your stomach. So, except if you have stomach problem. Wow. Pastor, they said there's stomach problem and there's stomach problem. That means that there's one problem where your stomach is big. Do you understand, I, do you understand what I'm saying? Listen. You find out that the reason why we argue those things is not, we're not, listen, I'm not a legalistic person. Believe me, I don't, I don't start saying some things publicly now before they put it on uh, Christian talks. Sorry, Christian, all of those things, you know what I'm talking about. Before them, Albert will get contact. Are you following me? SP married two weeks ago. Have you seen how fat he is? I promised my wife that I was going to talk about it. I'm just seeing him for the first time since he married. Then I just saw somebody walk cut up, walk cut up. <laughs> Messi, well done, no. That's not what we planned, no. Mm. <laughs> no more endomy. <laughs> uh -huh. What were we saying? I said 40 minutes. Let me finish this in 40 minutes. Are you getting blessed? Come on, come on, saints. Are you getting blessed? I, I need you to secure it. Secure those things in your heart. It will become a govern, government in your mind. It will now make that the next time you see food, the food won't control you. The taste of the food will not control you. When it is done, you will get up and say, we are done. We thank God for sweet food, but we also thank God for taste limit. Listen. And everything God gave legally for the belly begins to destroy the body 
the moment it passes its normal threshold. Everything. 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 And I'm not just talking about food. Everything. Every desire. The moment it passes its threshold, it becomes a point of destruction. Even within what you call legality. Do you understand me? It's my money. Oh, I did not steal it. So let me eat it. My brother. Eat it. They will be operating your heart soon and removing fat from around it. Eat it. Your liver will turn white. Eat it. Listen, let me tell you how dangerous this teaching is. I was speaking to some people two days ago. And I said to them, we also have to acknowledge that the deterioration in the quality of the body began from when Adam sinned. We are collecting 6,000 years of deterioration. So what we collected at birth is already damaged. Part of our worship is to patch that thing while we are looking forward to wearing our... Oh! Philippians 3 is calling me. I'm coming. We'll get there. While we look forward to wearing our bodies from heaven, we must find a way to patch this one that they gave us. And the best way to patch it is to clearly discern flesh, spirit, any motion that comes from the flesh. Even if it's when I am feeling hungry like I want to die. If I hear the flesh inside that hunger, we extend the fast. Ayo. I wish you heard me. This particular teaching. Pastor Ian Pastor. We need to take it and break it down. Because these are the kind of teachings you have to rightly divide. They have a tendency to error. They, these kind of teachings have a tendency to error. So we have to take it and rightly divide it. So that people know how to discern their, their, their desires. And know how to dis because the Bible also said that He gave us freely all things to enjoy. That means God is not anti enjoyment. Do you get it? That's why I said it's a teaching that has a tendency to tend to error. Now, if you are not, if you, if you don't rightly divide it, you suddenly start to have brothers and sisters who are unkept. Do you understand? It? And they don't believe that dressing well is part of their divine. But it's worship. Worship. It's worship. So understand this. While we wait. If you understand that while we wait, you need to take care of your body. When you are bathing in the bathroom. Lord, I long to worship you. That's a shower I see to your head. Oh Lord, I long. Or else as water from both. From <laughs> To worship you. You have given me so much to be thankful for. And my words are not enough to express my love. So everything I have inside of me Lord I give to you there is nothing more to do there is nothing more to do there is nothing more to do than worship you I sense permission from the spirit of God to say this to you Many of us need to start portion control for our physical food. That means that food is not to be eaten until you have belly food. Those of you who watch us from around the world, belly food is African palace for full belly. Are we, are you together? Are we together? Why are we entering into portion controls? Number one, we want to pull back the desire that comes from the flesh. 
Because you will notice, if you are true to yourself, that the desire keeps expanding. So if you start to collect three meat every day, one day three meat will not be enough. You need like six. Then you wake up one day and you want to eat turkey and chicken. Then with small ram, then small dog meat. Is the dog meat you used to share? The, what, what are you shouting what, what for? Have you ever seen anybody barking on the street after eating dog? Do you want to insult my people? It's the mix. Okay, we should mix dog and snail. Not dog and chicken. What do you want to mix dog with? With pig? Arise, kill and eat. Those of you are still feeling, Kah. Pastor, please stop that dog thing. Just preach. Dog. Woo, woo. Man's best friend. Woo. Except if you show me a scripture that shows dog as what man's. Do you know what dog is in the Bible? Philippians chapter 3. Watch out for those dogs. Beware of dogs. The Bible says, Beware of dogs. It says, Your best friend. Are you alive? I just gave and gas people free rights. It's allowed in this church. And Calabar people. You know, that means we have a joint to go to me and you after this service. Don't bring Pastor Ayo. No, but we taught Southern Canada people how to do it. If Pastor A is not coming, we'll go Pastor Oni. Pastor Oni is a done in that matter. Leave it. Pastor Oni, have you repented now? Your wife will not allow you to repent. Jesus Christ. Samuel, I suspend you from being my personal assistant from today. You are the agency against repentance. Before that, your family sin will rob on me. Are you following me? I sense by the Spirit to say to you, please start to practice portion controls. Enjoy the portion that falls to you. Savo every spoon. Let Jesus be glorified in the fact that you acknowledge that the taste board was given to him or was given by him. He said, speak and I will listen. He said, because the ear tried words like the mouth tastes bread. That means the mouth was given to discern taste. So don't war against taste. Enjoy taste. But war against less. Tell flesh, this is how much I'm going to eat every day. This is what is necessary for strength. Sometimes maybe that's why God sends governments. <laughs> Let me hide behind the Nigerian flag. Saying that again, please stop. <laughs> Peter, are you the one? Please understand. And sincerely, of course, I didn't preach this because there's hunger in the land. God forbid. In fact, it is better to practice in the midst of abundance. And guess what? Because it does not register in our conscience as sin. We all become guilty of it. No, no. I was ashamed of myself when I saw my plate after one buffet. So, so that you understand that the deliverance that I'm recommending to you is a deliverance Jesus gave me. When we were in Zaria, when I was working with excellence, we went to Abuja to do a stale. They wanted to start Excellence International Ministries and do a conference, uh, um, Lion of Judah in Abuja, that prayer conference. I know that time I was the administrative director of the administrative assistant, something, something. I, that was my title had administrative inside. So I went to Abuja to prepare for it and we had a breakfast meeting. Please forgive me. For pastors. And it was a buffet. That day, I stopped and I looked around. And I said to myself, 
in many of these occasions, it is more noble to have people on the other end serving. Sometimes it's even good for you. Because see that they are round spoon. That is... That they are, that is like glue. Then they fetch the rice. They will now flatten it. Then they will turn it. Then you are angry. They would have just left me to fetch this rice by my... It's just, this time if I sniff it. Please go and sit down at your table and sniff it. Since it's not in your village, that's rice. Sir, I saw ministers. Give me this plate. Ministers filled their plate and were holding plate like this and blocking things from falling <laughs> on their way to their seat. That's many years ago. Many years ago. That's before God Life started because I resigned from excellence the moment, I think, a few months into God Life. That's that time of us and not 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 these present things. <laughs> Why are they shouting tipping, tipping everywhere in this church? They want to put me in trouble. <laughs> Gideon, you know you are a very good person. You will not say tipping. Yes. So let's <laughs> when I said it, you know. <laughs> oh. That was before all of this hunger reached this dimension. Guess what? I had finished looking and making my conclusions not too long ago, maybe like three, four years ago. I went to a hotel and it was buffet. Very good hotel. Let me not do, do them advance. Very good hotel. I mean, one best in Nigeria, actually. And it was buffet. Then I went there. Then I suddenly realized that everything was attractive. Everything was very colorful. Everything was calling you. And you know in the buffet, you have the right to go back eight times. When I saw my plate, when I sat down and I saw my plate, my eyes lifted up to heaven. Then my heart went back to that breakfast meeting. Then I told myself, this flesh is not something you overcome at once. It's something you need to consistently remember to put on that check. That day I, got, I gave God excuse. I told him, I said, I said, Lord, there's an amount you pay to sleep in a place that you want to make sure you finish the amount before. <laughs> Hear me. Don't, don't, don't go to that kind of place if you don't have the internal discipline. Because at the end of the day, you are thinking you are finishing your money. You are damaging God's temple. Are you following me? Do I have a few saints here? And please don't only play this thought on food. Play it on everything that has the tendency to call your desire. Everything. 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 Listen, there's a day I was playing. Those of you who know me know that I'm a scripture addict and I love worship. I am a, that one I'm not ashamed of. I'm a scripture addict. I love worship. And I love worship. And if you know, the, the latest airboards that Apple has, I went to England, uh, one of my friends bought it for me. And the sound quality is good. I still have it. I think it's a man. The sound quality is excellent. Every th they say, you hear it. If you want to test the mix of anything, where you hear that headphone, that's why I've never given Pastor A to put near him. Because I know he will steal it. <laughs> Pastor A is not a thief, as in when you are not there, he will carry it. No, it's an arm robber. <laughs> we'll continue another day. His, even his physical stature is the arm. Do you understand? He doesn't need to carry anything with him when he's robbing you. And he's beginning to turn his wife that way. Fragile happiness. 
Do you understand? Clean. When I got it, I realized that for literally for days, I was always wearing it. And I was playing worship. I was, worship. I was enjoying, I think Casting Crowns had just released a new album then or something like that. This is their recent deluxe, deluxe album. Before they did their, okay, some of you don't follow them, so let me not forget about it. So they did an album. That album last year, two years ago. And I wore it. No, not Casting Crowns, Sila. What's, what's that song, Joseph, that you led in praise worship the other day? The Sila song. Also. Leave it. That album had just come out. So I was wearing that thing consistently. I laid down that evening to meditate. And the Lord said to me, take that thing off. At first, I thought he was saying the worship was a distraction to what I wanted to say to you. When I took it off, the Lord said to me, he said, don't put anything near your ear for that long. It will damage your earbuds. It's the Holy Ghost that is teaching you biology. You know, sometimes you want to ask God, don't you have power to heal the ear? Let me be damaging it, you be healing it. Do you understand it? But that, it was God who woke Joseph up and said, take this child and run to Egypt. Run. Take off. He said, because Herod is looking for him to kill. That means on this day, I don't feel like sending angels to slap Herod. My brother, carry this child. Run. Samuel said to God, I'm telling you people now, because some of you are more righteous than God. You are quoting scripture on a bad habit. Samuel said to God, God, you said to go anoint David. He said, if Saul hears, he will kill me. God said, oh, it's true. Go and read it. God said, it's true. He said, carry a goat when you are going. Anybody that asks you on the road, tell them you are going to go and do sacrifice. God advised Samuel. There are some men that, <laughs> they tell you fear God. There are some men that even God is thinking, Kai, are you sure I'm not afraid of this guy? <laughs> And that's a joke. You know that's a joke. Because when God does that to a man, it's because his cup is not yet full. Even God does not act abruptly. He doesn't. If you know the principle and the nature of God, you know that he, just, he will not just wake up and kill somebody. Even if the person is in iniquity. He told Abraham, in your fourth generation, your seed will go. They will live there 400 years. Then after 400 years, I'll bring them back. He said, because the sin of the Amorites is not yet full. How about God? Just drive out the Amorites and give us the land. So, don't quote scripture on bad habit. Don't do confession for regeneration on bad habit. In fact, if I had taught this the way I wanted to teach it, I wanted to show you that your legality to stand against sickness, I think I mentioned last week, is the fact that having done what I need to do to present a body unto God, no sickness, no disease. I have served the Lord my God. He has blessed my bread and he has blessed my water and no sickness, no disease. Some of the legality you have to stay the hand of sickness comes because while I wait, I prepare the body to present to God. I want to wake up tomorrow and see some of you jogging on these streets. And do it as spirit. Do you understand? Like you have prayer time. Prayer routine. Like you do devotion. Wake up every morning. And say to yourself. Especially those of us upon whom the ends of the world have come. I told you that the body we inherited started being damaged from Adam. If we are collecting 6,000 years of damage. What do we want to present? So listen. Because our time is fast spent. Philippians chapter 3. I know what you know in Philippians chapter 3. That I may know him, right? I wish we could read the whole thing. We can. Philippians 3 from verse 1. Philippians 3. Look at this. So I told you technology called belly. It's actually spiritual. It's a spiritual base. Right? Uh-huh. That it is from there the rivers of living waters flow. But it is also from there that you are damaged. 
where the spirit of the Lord is, that belly, there is liberty. Whose God is their belly? So both of the bellies are gods. Uh -huh. I wish you heard me. What did I say? Both of the bellies, they are gods. If it's a spiritual belly, then that's the base of the Holy Ghost. Do you not understand why First Corinthians chapter 6 closed the way it did, Pastor? That's why he said, don't you, if you join yourself with a harlot, you become one body with her. He said, but if you are joined with the Lord, you become one spirit with him. And then he went on to tell you. He said, you are bought with a price. You no longer belong to yourself. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which both are God. Philippians chapter 3. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Verse 12. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Look at verse 12. I'm, I know you know what came before, right? Verse 10, that I may know him and above his resurrection. You know, send fellowship of suffering. Be conformable unto death. That somehow I might attain to, unto the resurrection of the dead. Then verse 11, verse, verse 12. He said, look at this carefully. Not as though I had already attained. Either we're already perfect. What? But I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also i am apprehended of christ jesus let's go on let's go on, let's go on. next verse brethren count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do what do i do forgetting those things which are behind uh -huh, and reaching forth unto the things that are ahead next verse shout it i press towards the mark for the high calling of god in christ jesus verse 15 look at this 15 listen carefully let us Therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. That means to be perfect is to wear this mind. So perfection in this context is not an attainment. If I can put the things that are behind behind me and press onto the one that is ahead. So let us as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any thing ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Stop. That means, this thing that I said to, unto you, people can get up and argue it. He said, and if you embrace that argument, God will reveal this thing to you. Next verse. Most times, do you notice that most times, this is where our story in Philippians 3 ended. He said, nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind what? You see this one accord? That's going to be my next as we wait. As we wait, we dwell in one accord. There's too much Satan steals from us because of our divergent philosophies. And many times it's an absence of humility. I'm telling you. Look at this. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained? Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Look at the next verse. Brethren, follow me, oh. Mona, they follow me. And anybody, we know they walk the way, where would they walk? Mark them. And mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. That means those who do like we do, also follow them. But if you see anybody acting outside of what we have declared, mark them. Be careful. Next verse. Look at this. Why? For many walk, of whom I have told you how often, and now I tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Next verse. Whose end is destruction? Uh, read the next statement. That's why I came. Yes, and whose glory is in their shame? Who mind? Can you see what we just saw in Colossians chapter 3? Ah, whose God is their belly? 
who mind earthly things, look at the next verse. And I guess it's the last verse there, right? Is, is that the last verse? Is that? No, no, go back. Hey, go, no, no, go back, go back, go back. 20, 20, 20. Hey, verse 21 is what I'm looking for. Don't expose me too quickly. You know, we said this while we wait, Abby. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for a savior. What did we say in Colossians chapter 3? Oh, set, seek those things which are above. When Christ is seated, so all of our mind engagements must go to heaven. Right? And so it tells you that when people create a divergent role, there is a belly at work there. I took you there so that you see whose God is their belly. That means, listen, the moment this earthly fleshly belly begins to walk in a man, listen to me very carefully, the moment it begins to walk in a man, it doesn't matter even if it will rise up against the work of God. That thing he feels must be satisfied. Please, let me, let me say this morning very carefully. Hear this. And I saw myself this morning finishing on this note. That's why I kept saying Philippians chapter 3 in the beginning. I told you last week that even pride is a belly. Everything that ends in the flesh is a belly. Come. Look at this. If the brethren are going this way and you believe that this way is wrong, whether you are right or wrong, hear this very carefully. Whether you are right or wrong, listen, how you know that love is the governing spirit is that you will find wisdom to drive all the brethren this way. You will not find what it takes to pick a few brethren on your way and leave the rest going like this. That is division. So many times, even your spiritual zeal can be dragged from a godless belly. I'm making sense to you. Do you understand it? Now listen to this. That's the reason why, except you find apostasy in the center, there's a wisdom to steward even when you perceive a different direction. I speak to a generation. You know why? Because we live in a generation where everybody believes that he has the right to be led by the Holy Spirit. And so pastor is not led by the Holy Spirit. The day what the Holy Spirit said to pastor does not agree with what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to me. And what you did not know is that many times what you have done, li listen, I say even if you are right, oh. except if you have a case of apostasy, what has happened to you is that you have become conceited in your... I wish a whole generation would hear this. Because what is left in the finishing of the work of Christ in our generation is our ability to stand shoulder to shoulder and understand the protocol of heaven in adding up everything God is doing into one. I said in the SCF alumni national meeting, you, it's online, you can, you can go and check it. So that you don't think it's something I'm saying just because this is Sunday morning. I told them, I said, we've got a major problem. The major problem is that we don't, we don't even have, we don't understand divine systems for fixing things. So the moment zeal falls upon us, we suddenly believe that we are right, everybody else is wrong. Please hear me. It's a generational problem. Do you realize that even people who are not schooled in scripture can sit down somewhere at the back on top of balcony in church and believe that everything we have done is wrong? Hear me, oh. Yo. Understand it. I feel like standing in front of somebody and saying, it's not you, it's not you. I'm not talking to you. But it's not you. You, you that is thinking it's you. It's not you. True. True, it's not you. I'm not talking to you. It's a generation. True. 
this morning, Jesus knows. I'm not, there's nobody in my heart. So as I'm talking, I realize, oh, we had one conversation with someone. It's, it's not you. Hear me. And I don't lie. I don't, I cannot use God's microphone to lie. Hear this very carefully. We have a generational problem. What we're discussing in that was that NCCF used to be one fellowship. Now, if you enter camp, there are like 14 corpus fellowships. Every denomination has a corpus fellowship. I said, but it was inevitably coming now. There used to be only one fellowship on campus. In the south, we knew SU. In the north, we knew FCS. In a few campuses here and there, they had knifes. Until they had a crisis, I think in 1987. Where FCS and Allied Fellowships broke away from knife. That's where this war started from. Because, you remember what we discussed last week? How come you brethren have a matter? Is there not one person wise? If there's nothing personal in it, how come nobody, there was nobody you could go to, to say, please bring an intervention between us. And both parties will listen. But guess what? We broke from there. And the moment we broke from there, before you knew it, Winners Campus Solution, Redeem Campus Solution, Equal Student Ministry. You know, Sister Ladan was in Equal Student Ministry. <laughs> Deeper Life Campus Solution. Are you following me? And we went, pop, 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 pop. Before you knew it, I was in FCS. I told them one day in AGM, I said, there are two problems I find. Number one, you can't say this is a convergence point for the body of Christ. And you lean towards the doctrine of a part of the body and don't, listen, the, oh, the kind of revivals God wants to birth on campuses, and I trust God that a generation will hear this. The kind of revival God wants to birth on campuses, the real problem is that we don't have convergent points. What we don't know is that God always goes to campuses because campuses are supposed to be citadel of learnings, right? That's where we sit down in social sciences around a podium and we are arguing theories. That's what it was supposed to be for spiritual things. So student fellowships are not supposed to take a theological tilt. They are supposed to be an open space where everyone can bring what he believes is truth but he must also be ready to be confronted so that he can establish how that truth is true. And lies will easily fall off when those councils exist. So part of what you find in the early church was that in Acts chapter 11, Peter, who Jesus seemed to have given the care of the church finished doing something in Cornelius house by the time he came back there was a council around which he sat down to provide a defense for why he did what he did 15 Acts 15 Paul and Barnabas had to return is that Paul and Barnabas or Silas Paul and one person they had to return to the same council in Jerusalem and James stood up at the end and gave his verdict from that day they were set free and the real problem is that we live within a context of such unruliness that makes that everything we feel inspired to do and say becomes the final. Of, if you see the way we're talking, you know we, we don't even fear God in our heart. We believe that whatever we do and say is the final authority in all things. So we don't feel the need to submit it. And we pick offense if anybody questions why. We do what we do the way we do it. You understand? Whose God is their belly? I'm saying to you that even the desire for supremacy is flesh and is a belly. A belly. But that's not why I brought you here. Whose God? No, go back, go back. Verse 19. Whose God is their belly and whose end whose end is destruction whose god is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind what i needed you to connect it to colossians chapter 3 who mind what earthly things next verse verse, verse 20 for our conversation is in heaven 
from whence also we look for the Savior. Kai, the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly composition. I told you there's a wisdom that comes from heaven. I met a minister of the gospel recently. And he has two friends who don't speak to each other in the same city. And the last time I'd met him would have been like four years before. And I said to him, sir, how far? And he said, no, 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 I've, I've tried to speak with both of them. And we're on it, we're on it. So I met him a few years after. And he said to me, when I listened to both of them, I realized that nobody could resolve back to the position of Christ. So I said to them, if we cannot resolve the issues between both of you, I will love you, you are my friend. I will love you, you are my friend. But I will not preach for anyone or both of you. I jumped out from my seat. I said, thank you, sir. I said, because an order needs to come back to us to a place of resolution where I can look at you and say, Pastor A, forgive Pastor Onismos. It's okay like that. Even if I came to you and I said, Pastor A, okay, it's true that Pastor Onismos offended you. But can't you see that what God began with him is also helping the advancement of the kingdom. So let's end this strife here so that the kingdom can just advance. Where do we get to as believers where we swear that we will not forgive each other? And what is beyond be, between us is not beyond pulpit talk. See, we can't finish talking like this and not pray for the church, including God life. I say it because I know that I have, I have an anointing to raise the next generation of ministers and I'm speaking into your spirit before your day comes before you become anything that your heart takes the right posture that there's no desire that comes from you that will not honor the supremacy of the workings of the lordship of the spirit of Christ because if anything does not honor the Lordship of Christ, what happens is that at that point, your God is your belly. At that point, what happens is that you seek your advantage above the advantage of Christ. I told God, I said, Lord, there's nobody I'm not willing to forgive. Nobody. Nobody. For the sake of this truth, no, there's no human being I'm not willing to forgive. Guess what? You find in many circumstances that people are not even willing to sit. We can't talk. You know why, Zach? You know why? We are our final authority in all matters. What we know is the highest revelation of Christ. Nobody can correct us. You see, we spoke about physical food. Now we are dealing with pride. To say to you, all of those workings end up in the flesh. And the flesh makes your God your belly. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, even the Lord, Jesus Christ. See verse 21, I hope it blesses you the way it has blessed me. Who shall change? I hope it blesses you. Who shall change? So why are we taking care of this body, sir? Because we are looking for Jesus. We know that when he shows up, he will change our vile body. So while we are waiting for him to change our vile body, we are presenting our bodies as living sacrifices only to him. We govern it in our hygiene. We govern it in our eating. So everything that falls within our power, 
we will do so that he will know that we know that these our vile bodies will be changed what to be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things I, I, I. that means when we posture the life that tells him a people are waiting for him by the time he shows up he will show up with such a magnetic authority that will capture our vile bodies and destroy our vile bodies and raise us up in a form that is like the form he's in. While we wait for that day, we posture ourselves as men who are sent to him. Lord, for as long as I live, collect, do what you will do with it. Lord, the one I can do, I have done. I've done it in my hygiene. I've done it in my eating habits. I've done it in my exercises. I've done it in my... What else do we do for the body? Eh, my rest. I've done it in all of these things. But there are dimensions of this breakage that only you can swallow. So when a virus is in the air and I breathe it in, Lord, let the days I took care of my body rise before you as an offering. Then let the power of what you finished in the cross get up against that virus and stop it. Because there shall no evil befall me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Listen. Let me say something I heard myself saying this morning. Please take note of it. It is also part of the reasons why we bring our physical bodies to spiritual environments like this. I wish you heard me. Hmm? Hmm? It's part of the reasons. Because we know that when the atmosphere of heaven is stirred up in a place, it does not only affect our spirits, it also rests on our mortal flesh. If you only knew how many healings you collected in one service, if you only knew, if you only knew how far the sickness had gone, it had possibly just not manifested. Then you came to the presence of God and the light of his glorious presence swallowed it. And you went back home, you were healthy. You would only notice that you just woke up one day, Shadi, and for five years now, I have never been sick. No, what you did not know is not I've never been sick. I've been going on doing my things. No, I've been coming into his presence and going out of it. Listen, it is also the reason why we study scripture. My son, pay attention to my word. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in your heart. In your heart. But for they are alive to those who find them and health to all their bodies. Flesh in Proverbs chapter 4 there is not, it's not that fallen flesh. It's body. Because of that marriage, you find out that the words are used interchangeably many times. That means as I read the Bible, I am adding life to my physical body. Listen, I just gave you one more reason to be glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because you know, how many times did you come depressed and you left happy? Don't you think that if the presence has that kind of effect on your soul, it also has an effect on your body? So part of the exercises for give, getting a body that God can use, part of the exercises, it's when they say, lift up your hands. Don't be too big for it. Do you understand? To the holy place. Don't play with ice. Don't play with the liberty of the spirit. Don't play with the atmosphere of God's presence. Don't play with it. Some of us are doing well. Maybe some of us have not learned yet. I had thought that at some point before this year runs out, we should take some time to just pray and minister to the Lord. And we will do it both teaching and practicing. Teaching and practicing. Teaching and practicing. Because I look around many times when we worship and certain people are lost. And I know it's one of the two problems. It's either pride or lack of knowledge. So let us take away the lack of knowledge part. So that if it's pride, we can tell. Because it should be nothing for you 
to lie down in God's presence. Not, it should be nothing. Because in the process of giving my body, part of the things I do is I take that body to a congregation of the righteous. Knowing that the congregation of the righteous is as healthy for my body as eating food. So part of the balance to my diet is fellowship. Oh, I wish you heard me. The next time you add your nutritional list, add the word of God, add fellowship with brethren. Understand that it has an effect on how healthy you live. So let's do the saints. I give you an instruction by the Spirit. Return home today and control your portions. Let me add, it is also godly for you to be sure that your food is balanced. At least that one, poverty cannot do it. So it's, it's godly. Make sure. I said it last Sunday. At least you live in Jaws. Vegetables are cheaper here than anywhere else. Maybe anywhere else in this nation. If you can't do anything, get like three leaf of aleo and cut inside your food. Cut small onions. I told them in Gombe, God bless our mothers. Sometimes we bought fish for a meal. But because they knew that days of scarcity were coming, they removed the head of the fish and gave us the body. Then when the days of scarcity came and our fathers could not give them money to sustain, we didn't know if you didn't ever hear them talking, you didn't know. Because they still cooked jollof rice. And it still had smell of fish. What you did not know was as the head of all the fish that your mother has been gathering, that she grinded. I like that. I like she, she grinded it. So you had fish. At least your food could smell fish. You felt like everything was all right. We used to curse our mother when we were growing up. I'll tell you why. Three, at least one week to three days before Garintuo finishes, my mother goes to grind the new Garintuo. <laughs> Do you know how I hated it? I hated it. I was hoping that it would finish one day so that they can force us to eat spaghetti. No, I have never known what it means to eat rice in the night. And my mother was the witch that made sure of it. Now we have grown older. We are blessing them for what we cursed them for. Because we didn't know the season of lack. During harvest of Masara, whatever happened, they will spare money to buy two bags. So if there was nothing to eat, there was two, whether it was karkashi, kuka, bushasha, kuka, there was something. There was always something. We didn't know the days of the scarcity of our fathers because we had mothers who looked forward. God has to bless our mothers. So. Hear it and understand it. So when you keep setting routines, keep setting health things, don't do it like you are faithless. Don't let anybody tell you it is faithlessness. To balance your diet. You just heard me today. While we wait, we offer our bodies. Some of you need a new health routine. I climbed, I climbed the scale recently and I realized that I've hit 87 again. So I told myself on my way back. Yeah, I went all the way down to 83. And I went there from 103. First, one drastic fast. Drastic. What a kind of fast. Drastic fast. Nine days. That's why some of you looked at me like this. I was fat. Then you did like this and did like this. And I was slim. Nine days. Drastic. What I was looking for was divine. But part of the instructions my pastor gave me that week. Was that he said to me, you need to walk on your body. I told him, I said, the last time I saw Baba Kwashi, he said it to me. Baba said, you need to start to watch your health now. 
me too as one who has been a faithful custodian I pass it to you I showed you last week in 1 Corinthians 6 said shall I then take the members of Christ and join no who is taking that means I am in control when you put food in front of you tell you tell the food I'm in control you are not in control I'm in control your sweetness will not change the determination of how much of you I will eat so if the food is too sweet reduce the size of the spoon you used to eat it or oh, I wish you heard me I know some of you say it's not sweet if it does not fill your mouth kill that full mouth I rebuke it find something smaller eat it so that you can take your time and enjoy what God has given you when you are done arise Sunday yeah. it's at that point that oak fellows will play them guys and flog them I, I wish you heard me even if we don't win them in that match let them have a tough time uh -huh. so that when they marry they too will now know that keeping feet is part of our family custom. Is anybody hearing me? Since let's close it right there. Whose God is their belly? But you set your eyes on heavenly things. Because it's from there we look for a savior who will change our vile bodies. Change it into the structure like fashioned unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he's able to subdue all things unto himself just throw your hands up to him and say lord i give you my body i give you my body please pray it for at least like the next 30 seconds see, see, see. while you are praying it if there are tissues that need repair they will be getting regenerated right now And vow to you that right now under this atmosphere of the spirit healings are happening because the working of the word of God is the working of the Holy Spirit. oh the breath of the freshness of heaven rain on me Rain on me, fill me with the power of heaven. Rain on me, rain on me. Oh, the breath of the freshness of heaven, rain on me. You start to see your skin glowing without skin care. You start to see your body coming alive. Because suddenly you have become conscious of offering your body. At that point, it will not only be the nutrition of the food you ate. It will be the consciousness that my body is the temple. Oh, the breath of the freshness of heaven rain on me rain on me fill me with the power of heaven rain on me rain on me rain on me Rain on me, 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 rain on me. Rain on me, 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 rain on me,
Rain on me, rain on me, rain, rain on me. Would you rain, rain on me? Would you rain on me, Lord? You will not use diseased bodies. So please heal our bodies. You will not use broken bodies. So please Lord make us whole. I curse now every terminal disease. I curse now every constructive advancement of death. Whether known or unknown, diagnosed, undiagnosed, I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let the process of it be reversed now. Lord, we serve you. You bless our bread, you bless our water. And you have taken away every disease of the Egyptians from us. We decree in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now that we are conscious that our bodies are yours, Lord, please, as we strive to offer you a body you can use, the places where our attempts cannot reach, Lord, perfect our worship and receive it. Let there be none feeble in our camp. Oh, I thought somebody would say better amen there. Lord, let there be none feeble in our camp. That we will be known for long life. And not just be long life because we want to live long. It will be long life because we are in active service. Lord, strengthen, guide, fulfill the days of our years like you have promised. And let your name be glorified. We give you praise, our Father. In Jesus' name and all God's people said.